here at 5.02 on November 18th. Roll call, please. All right, starting with Karen Fogg. Present. And by the way, if everyone can hear me, if you're muted, if you press the space bar down, it will automatically unmute you. Next is Otis Holloway. Present. John Angleson. Present. Ann Dorr. Trying to talk, but she's muted. Ann is here. And go ahead and press the space bar. We can we can see you. We know you're here. Uh, present. Next is uh, next is Roger Jacks. Here. Bill Barnes. Here. And Ali has um, unable to make the meeting tonight. Um, but other than that, we have a quorum. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, item number one, approval of the minutes from the August 19th, 2020 meeting. Looking for a motion on approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. We have a motion from Commissioner Barnes looking for a second. Second. I'll second that. Okay, let's see, we have a second. Uh, was that John Anderson? I think it was okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Moving forward to item two, which is consideration of uh, public comments. Have we have any written public comments for tonight? And none were submitted by the deadline this morning for presentation tonight. Okay. That moves us on to item number three, A, which is the Recreation Superintendent Report. Can you hear me? Yes. We can, yes. Okay, so the Recreation, rec, ah, excuse me, Recreation Division began its plans in September to move forward with our dance, our fitness, our youth and adult sports, quilting and some of our special events that we had set. We had a slow start in resuming our indoor programs. Um, we started with some of our most popular ones like the dance and fitness and the sports and gradually moved into a few of the other additional ones. It was our hope to start quilting by the end of October or November, but the instructor has opted to wait until January. Uh, let's see, the department continued to work on fall programs in October with the fall program coming out, we, what we did is instead of doing the normal fall brochure that we normally produce, we were unable to do that with the newspaper because of our timeline and able to get stuff put together. Plus we normally didn't, we didn't have what we normally would produce as far as the number of programs go. So what we did is we created individual specialty type flyers. Like we did one for dance and fitness. We did one for uh, youth basketball. We did another one for some of the holiday programs and we included our Santa's calling form with it and we made a packet and we took those to the schools right at the beginning of November. In October, we started our, actually we started our dance classes in, on August 24th at Metcalf Park to comply with COVID at the start of our fall season. They were moved indoors the week of September 8th. So we only had to do them outdoors for one week the fall dance ran for eight weeks. We had to do a shortened revised schedule. That way we could hopefully get everything through in time. And the students were learning what they had originally started in the spring when COVID hit and we had to cancel all of our classes. And then um, we ended up having our dance recital on October 24th. We did this with about 29 students, I believe it was, in a total of overall of six classes along with six solo and duet performances. We did lose quite a few participants when we decided to move the program outdoors. After one week of registrations, we did have to refund almost close to $9,000 and we lost about 96 participants from that um, due to COVID. 
We also lost one of our instructors. Um, so we're, we still have one and we're continuing to do with what we have, but we're revamping our entire dance program to try to see if we can get it back to what it once was. But basically we're back at ground zero starting over with, like I said, we only had 20, I think 26 or 29 participants this season. We did extend uh, an opportunity for those who are interested to take some fundamental and technique classes through the second week of December. So we do have a few that we're doing with that and it seems to be going pretty good right now. We just don't wanna lose their interest until our winter program begins back up in January. The fitness class is also resumed in September and those seem to be taking their normal steps as they, as they move forward. We do have one instructor who isn't able to return yet because she had surgery during the time that we were down for COVID and she will hopefully return in December, if not the end of November. In sports, Ryan uh, Fruworth, our recreation coordinator, was able to start our fall season of sports. We were able to offer adult volleyball, adult kickball, and we have 12 adult teams in volleyball with 104 players. Kickball had six teams with 64 players, and unfortunately, due to the lack of registrations, we had to cancel the youth volleyball this year. We also held our first pickleball tournament on September 12th. We had 13 teams. So that was something new for us. And as soon as we get our new pickleball courts in, I'm sure we'll be looking at trying to do some more of those on the outdoors. Youth basketball registration started on October 12th and the league is set to begin in January of 2021. Adult basketball registrations also are taking place and their first game will begin on December 7th. We're still looking at, at some point, trying to produce a cornhole tournament with hopes to have that in the spring of 2021. Although they're not parks and rec activities, our facilities are utilized quite a bit. This last, since June, I wanna say May, and then I think we took some time off in June and picked back up in July. Every weekend at Southside and Centennial Parks, there's been whether either baseball or softball tournaments being held. The two sites actually were a hosting site for the 40 year old senior softball tournament. I know those two numbers don't seem to go very well together, 40 year old and senior citizen. I don't know, but we have a 40 year old senior citizen division. And that took place over the weekend, of September 25th through the 27th, it was four days. And that brought in the city as a whole, quite a bit of revenue. It was like over $40,000, almost $41,000 in revenues. And that's not including what the restaurants and our shopping tax and all of that brought in as well. Kingman Youth Football and Cheer, which is another not a parks and rec program, but they utilize our facilities. They had to cancel their fall season. They didn't get enough registrations. But for those of you who don't know, there is two youth football leagues that are operating in Kingman. And the Rebels Youth Football, which is more of a travel organization, still continue to run their league. And they meet at Southside Park. They host the games on various Saturdays from October all the way through till actually their last fun final games are this weekend. Let's see, what else was there? We get utilized a lot by Kingman Softball Association and now the AFA, which is the Amateur Fast Pitch Association. Um, basically they operate the adult softball leagues and those will finish up here in the second week of December. As for special events, the Andy Devine Days was canceled in September. Our family camp out that we had set for October 3rd and 4th was also canceled. We didn't get any registrations, unfortunately. So we're hoping to try again at another time for that one. I think part of our biggest problem is, is when schools were out and they weren't holding in-school classes, they are one of our main feeds for advertising and promotions. And with the schools being closed, it was a challenge for us because we didn't have a way to get all of those flyers and the information out to the students. Our annual coloring contest that takes place every Halloween, we did receive over 1,500 sheets submitted. So that was, you know, we're kind of happy to see that because when we did an Easter, I think we ended up with like 30 or 40 sheets. So the 1500 was a good number for us to see. Let's see, department team members also worked on a family bingo night, family ice cream and bingo that was held at Palo Christi this past Saturday, actually two Saturdays ago, sorry, my apologies, Fridays. And we were trying to remain under the 50 people for COVID and we did receive 40 participants. So to us, that was another good number. It's not a big money maker. It's more for us, I think, is about the fact that we're being able to offer something to our community, even if we're not making the profits or getting the revenues 
that we would normally like to get. But I think considering with the pandemic and everything that our city and our communities are going through, and it gives people the opportunity to do this and social distance, um, I think was a good valuable asset to have. Some of our other upcoming holiday activities that we have is the Santa's Calling, the Letters to Santa, Breakfast with Santa, Mrs. Claus, AKA Karen Fogg's uh, Holiday Christmas Workshop will be coming up, and the annual Polar Bear Day. So we are also trying to see if the possibilities in December, if we can do a drive-in movie with the hopes to show the Polar Express. All of our events that we have scheduled right now are able to comply with social distancing and we're gonna limit the numbers in the public areas so that we don't you know, violate COVID, anything like to do with that. Both the city pools are now closed to the public since April, although KUSD and Swim Neptune, um, which is the one of the swim organizations has been utilizing Centennial Pool for swim practices and meets. Back in September, we hosted a three day swim meet tournament, which brought in 341 swimmers over the three days. The association that was hosting it actually did the swim sessions and divide them up so that there wasn't too many people in the pool or on the deck at any one given time. So they did a really good job about spacing out those participants over the three days. Other than that, we are recruiting for several positions in our youth basketball. Um, we're still looking for recreation instructors, adult basketball referees, park rangers, and we recently just filled one of our office attendants from a vacancy that took place back in May, and that's Miss Melinda Silva. So we look forward to working with her and all of that she's able to bring to our office. Other than that, that concludes my report. Any questions? Who has I an outstanding? One. Please continue. One at a time, please. I don't know who is. I have one, Yvonne. This is Karen. Hey, Karen. Um, as far as the dance, since you lost so many participants, do you happen to know if they went to a different organization? Yes, they did. One of, the, one of the other dance places in town? Yes, one that was located literally just off of a, just right down the road from us, but because they're in the county and the county was allowing participations for group classes like that, um, about 160 of our participants went to that organization. Oh. Okay. We, in the spring when we had our classes, we had 210 registrations enrolled and we refunded and canceled and postponed and tried to redo it and so forth and as everything moved forward. Um, but yeah, they ended up just, it's project movement. They're on um, Gordon, is it Gordon? Yeah, off of Gordon and Willow. So, and that's where our other instructor went to. Our, and I understand, I mean, the instructor says, I need to work, I need money, I can't keep, you know, waiting for classes to happen and they offered her a job and she went over there and as soon as the students found out she was teaching, that's where the majority of them went. Yeah. That's yeah, hard. Any other questions? Any comments? I'd say kudos for a great job during this season of, of tough COVID situations and uh, you did it safely and, and, and got a lot of participation. Congratulations. Thank you. I said it's been a roller coaster ride, but we're doing the best we can. And I mean, I, I'm fortunate too that I have a great crew to work with. Ryan and Beth have been, you know, done an excellent job in both of their areas. And especially when things get thrown at us and we're unexpected, it says, okay, COVID says you got to cancel this. And we're instantly, okay, everybody get on the phone. We have to make phone calls. And a lot of times it was like, the same day or you know you with with no notice and we're sitting here trying to call everybody to get everybody notified and it's the same thing with like the tournament Gary and I think we've been working really close together trying because we do the registration and the payments and the organization part of these tournaments but it's his crew that has to make sure that they have all of their I's dotted and their T's crossed so that they know which fields are prepping for which divisions and what age and different because it's not just go out dragging water you've got to know bases you got to know pitching distances there's all kinds of other criteria that go along with it. So, 
you know, my kudos go out to him with all of the work that his crew's been doing to make these tournaments happen every weekend. At the same time, it brings revenue to our cities and to our city. And I know for a fact that we've been in communication with, um, oh, forgive me, what's the, the hotels and stuff, and they're, they're packed. So they're happy because they're getting the revenues that they wouldn't normally have with COVID and nobody really wanting to travel. So if it wasn't for them, who knows what would happen with our hotels at this point? Yeah, that's true. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, moving on to 3B, Golf Pro Report. Well, good evening. This is my uh, first meeting with having video capability, so I want to apologize for the blinding glare coming off of my forehead there. Um, uh, we continue to have a great season. Uh, the numbers remain up. We're moving into our slow season now. Uh, with, we've had a number of cancellations as far as our annual tournaments go due to COVID. Uh, most of those have already booked their dates for 2021. So hopefully we'll uh, be in a better position to host those events next year. But we did have some of them that did continue this year. Uh, the Cowboy Classic, which was uh, fairly recently, uh, Seroptimist added a tournament this year and they had a uh, much better turnout than they had anticipated. They were hoping for 64 players and ended up with 80 players. Um, the Cowboy Classic, which typically is around 36 players, had 52 players this year. So there are players that are wanting to get out and play golf. And uh, we're seeing that de uh, definitely with the numbers that uh, we have as far as our play goes. Um, we hosted a disc golf event, uh, one of their major events, at least for our community on the 7th. And there were a number of professional participants in the disc golf world that played in this event. And they were very complimentary of the golf course. They're actually looking at hosting a two-day sanctioned event here uh, around the same time, per time period next year. Uh, and anticipating uh, 150 players for that event for two days. So that's something we are looking forward to and working with our local uh, disc golf president to get that set up and hopefully sanctioned for their event for next year. Uh, junior golf, uh, during the summer months, we had to limit the number of participants in our junior golf program due to COVID. We reduced it to 60 players, four classes of 15 kids uh, in each group. And during the fall, we elected to host an additional program to kind of offset that uh, reduction in numbers that we had. And we hosted it on Fridays when the kids are out of school. And we ended up with another 60 kids that participated in the fall program. And that netted us roughly 24 kids more than we had for the 2019 program. So overall, that went very well also. Uh, this coming Saturday, we're hosting the Adult Junior Golf Tournament, uh, and as of today, we have got 68 that are registered to participate, so uh, we're looking forward to a great event this weekend. Um, we've continued to run some promotions throughout the year. We, we did one called uh, Get Your Kicks with Two for 66. Um, the latter part of the summer, we had good participation with that. Uh, we have taken part with the Lee Williams and Kingman High School and their discount card program. You may have seen those that offer discounts at various businesses throughout the city here. And we have taken part in that this year offering two for one green fees uh, after 11 o'clock. It's just a one-time use uh, tab that gets, gets taken off of the card. Uh, but then we also offer a uh, free fountain beverage if they purchase a sandwich in the grill. So we're getting good response on that as well. Um, other than that, uh, Mr. Angelson, uh, with your request of having the um, Pro Shop and the F&B numbers included in the report, uh, we've added those on there, so you have be, had the opportunity to see those. Um, so uh, with that, that concludes my report, if anybody has any questions. I have a question. Uh, are you getting many people from out of town that are coming to use the courses, or, or is it primarily uh, locals and somewhat active? Uh, no, we're still getting uh, quite a bit of traffic from California. I don't think not as much from Nevada like we did in April when the Nevada golf courses got shut down, but uh, we're still seeing some traffic from, uh, I would say, majority from California um, that are not our regular players. Um, and with that, uh, we are in the process uh, of redoing the billboard that's on hole 13 next to the I-40. Um, that should be uh, done and up probably within the next, uh, hopefully two weeks, we're working on get it scheduled. We got the artwork approved uh, this week. 
And so they're going to be out to install that and uh, make that billboard a bit more attractive, hopefully uh, coaxing those people that are passing along on I-40 to, to stop and play around a golf. So uh, we're, we're looking at that traffic that's uh, utilizing the I-40 to come and play golf here. That's great. Thank you for a great uh, the report and uh, business is pretty good. We've been, business has been doing very well. We're uh, well ahead of last year. Um, I think we've got a lot of, a lot of that to thank for, um, I wouldn't say thank, but COVID has definitely uh, impacted that in a positive manner because golf is something that people can go out and do. Uh, our governor actually encouraged players to go or people to go out and play golf. Um, it's considered a, an essential business. So uh, it's been a plus this year for that. That's great. Thank All you. right, moving on to, uh, go ahead. One quick question for Greg. Uh, what is the cost of an annual pass and what does that include? So we have the five day annual pass, which is weekdays only, that's a thousand dollars and that covers your green fees. Uh, our seven day pass is 1250 and that's green fees as well. And then we have the options for um, a trail fee if you have your own personal cart, which is 850. And uh, it's 1050 if you have an annual pass for one of our carts. All right, any other questions? Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment. I'd like to uh, uh, give uh, some Greg, some kudos for the for the pro shop. It's looking very nice now with some some merchandise in there. Uh, uh, long needed, I think, and uh, it, it will ha will help do nothing but help uh, uh, the golf course going forward. So thank you, Greg. My pleasure. And the uh, the revamping or the the uh, renovation that we did, uh, adding the additional space in the dining room, it reduced the pro shop size, but um, it's really still give us the opportunity to merchandise it quite well. So uh, it's uh, it's showing in our sales. Uh, we've been doing quite well with our merchandise sales as well, so. Very good. All right, moving on to uh, 3C golf course report. Thank you, Mr. Jax. Uh, good evening, everybody. I got a few things to highlight from my submitted report. Uh, starting, obviously, what I feel is most important uh, is the fall airification of the golf course. Uh, that was completed successfully this year, including greens, which is uh, something that we haven't really taken advantage of in the past. Um, and obviously, moving forward, that's my plan to uh, airify greens both spring and fall. Uh, it can do absolutely nothing but good for us. Um, and then we were able to uh, get a solid time in the tee boxes and the fairways as well. So uh, again, with the warm temperatures we've been seeing, which are kind of unusual, um, I think that it was, uh, it was proper timing starting at the end of, of September and moving into October with that. Uh, and everything's healed up nicely so far with the exception of a little damage uh, to the turf on 11 and 13 fairways. Uh, but my philosophy is if it damaged it, it probably needed to be that way. So we're going to get back out. Uh, we've been doing some slit seating and things of that nature to keep it back, you know, get it back in shape for us. So, uh, also important, I think, to highlight is we had a small, um, I wouldn't say scare, but concern of fungus uh, late in August. We had exactly one thunderstorm on the golf course that I can count, and that thunderstorm brought us well over an inch of rain. So. Wow. That type of thing happens, uh, you know, you're introducing all kinds of things that you can't control that are just washing onto the golf course. Um, and then also increased humidity, uh, height, overnight temperatures, all of those things uh, create somewhat of a nightmare for us. But uh, it was caught early. We were uh, able to uh, luckily have it in our budget to do a fungicide app. So that helps a lot. Um, and we lost very minimal turf compared to years past for that app. So uh, another thing that we did that I introduced, uh, actually consulting with Mike, I gotta give him credit for this too. It was more his idea than mine. Uh, we introduced growth regulators to the fairways uh, and we were able to 
actually apply those at the same time that we apply the fungicide. So the growth regulators kind of slow not only the fungus, but also kind of slow the turf growth rate that you see when you get that kind of rain. Usually you get a huge flush of nitrogen that just, you know, you're out bailing hay for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, and that also helps us to uh, keep it from spreading by slowing it down. So um, thanks, Mike, for your input on that. It's appreciated and it obviously worked. And I think it's something that we're going to carry forward um, and probably introduce even earlier uh, in the summer, maybe even late spring. I think it'll it'll also cut back on mowing duties and things of that nature. Um, another thing that we've got going is, and I would kind of like to just take a minute to recognize uh, a guy by the name of Butch Roberts. Uh, he lives just across the street from the Chipping Green, and he's been out the last uh, 60 days taking care of some of our landscape areas, areas that are kind of suffering because we don't have inmate labor anymore. Uh, and he's got some really good plans to try to bring some color to the golf course. Um, and he's doing it all at his own will for something to do, basically. And so I just wanted to take a moment and kind of thank him publicly. Uh, he's saving us a lot of labor and things are looking really good. We're getting nothing but compliments from, uh, from all of our players. And then always, uh, I want to thank the, the golf course maintenance team. Uh, you know, currently we're down 179 man hours every single week without inmates um, and operating on the city manager's skinny budget. And of course, we've had added duties of cleaning with COVID and these guys are not complaining one bit. I think that, uh, you know, they're happy to be here and they're really stepping on the plate and, and helping us out. So big thank you to them for the for the people that play when you see them, you know, getting a little pat on the back and let them know that, uh, you know, not, I, I appreciate it. I tell them all the time, but it would be nice for, for them to hear from somebody else too. So that pretty much concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any, ans or answer any questions if you have them. I have a quick question. What is going on next to the block wall on 14 there? They've dug a, they did a large trench through there and they're going down through the vacant land that's between that and the Country Club Drive, do you know what that is? Uh, Mr. Barnes, actually I do. That is a project that's, uh, it's Unisource is doing that, Unisource Electric, and what they're doing is running a new power line through there. Uh, a couple years back, actually last year, they ran a new line all the way down hole seven, and this will tie in uh, underneath the streets and actually upgrade the infrastructure for electrical. So. So far, they've been really good to work with. In fact, they left us some dirt, which was really nice. Uh, that's kind of oh, hard yeah. to come by. So um, it's been good working with them. But yeah, it's, it's just an upgrade from Unisource. I also noticed that there was somebody out there surveying uh, on the course, in the interior of the course, a couple of weeks ago when we were playing. What's that about? Um, most of that is due to uh, engineering is trying to update uh, their GIS system. And I've asked them to do some survey locations for me uh, so that we can get better blueprints of what's going on on the golf course for future irrigation, uh, things of that nature. So you're surveying water lines and other things that are going under the course? Okay. That's correct. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, I noticed in your report, uh, Pat, that you had some wind damage to some trees. Um, and I was wondering what the tree repra replacement policy is for the golf course. Uh, currently, what we're working on with being shorthanded is uh, basically kind of going back to my last report. We've got a greenhouse going. We're trying to grow all of our own trees here. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room in the budget for replacement, especially big trees when they come down. Uh, but it's definitely something that's important to me. I just would like to be a little more selective as to what we're putting out there. You know, the, the big tree that fell down was a, a weeping willow. They take all kinds of water. Uh, their roots are very invasive to the grass. And obviously with the water that they get every day, they're shallow rooted and that's why they fall over. Uh, but we are definitely working toward that program still. 
Uh, I'd just like to add to my thanks to your work crew. The golf course looks beautiful. Uh, it's very impressive what you've been able to do, you and your work crew. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'd like to add to that as well. I think uh, the golf course uh, gives great curb appeal for Kingman, Arizona. You know, driving down Interstate 40, you know, really nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. I enjoy what I do, and uh, I like to let it show, for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 3D, Park Superintendent Report. All right. Good afternoon, I'm Jerry Seib, your park superintendent. We'll move on to our slideshow here. All right, so starting off with our new slide, or excuse me, our new shade at Firefighters Park covering our one of our newer playgrounds. Uh, we worked with Mojave County Fairgrounds. They gave us a safe place in the fenced in area that they have there to store our equipment before the installation so it was close to on site. Uh, it was pushed back, unfortunately, one week due to missing components that didn't arrive with the, the rest of the shade structure, but it was still open on September 29th. Then also we had a, our newest playground at Cecil Davis had its grand opening and ribbon cutting on September 16th. Our pickleball courts, this is our current project we are working on. It's the north of our tennis courts. We just started grading and leveling of the land starting October 22nd. We removed the concrete pad west of the racquetball courts just to discover that it was reinforced with uh, rebar. And we had to rent a hydraulic jackhammer along with a second mini excavator to get all that out. But we had it all completed in one day. And we actually broke all this into smaller pieces that's gonna be used as riprap later on in the project. And we have it stored at Centennial by one of our Ramadas. And unfortunately, we had to remove our horseshoe pits there to make room for it but we had new ones built before we ripped those out. We didn't want to remove, uh, especially in today's time with COVID-19, any uh, outdoor activities. So we built these first before we removed those. Um, they were built all in-house, including the backstops. They run a true north and south orientation, and they were actually built to NHPA specifications, which is the National Horseshoe, National Horseshoe Pitchers Association. And they were open before, like I said, we removed the old ones. Our Kingman adopt a Park program started out strong. On August 1st, we had the Kingman 66, Route 66 Rotary Club adopted Charles Metcalf. August 20th, we had Kingman Young Marines and the Marine Corps League 887 co-adopted Veterans Memorial, Memorial Park together. September 4th, Kingman Main Street adopted White Cliffs Wagon Wheel Trail. September 10th, Sidewinder Painting adopted Hubs Neighborhood Park. September 10th, also Mojave County Libertarian Party adopted Mojave Neighborhood Park. September 11th, Battle Cry Designs and a Warriors Battle, a nonprofit organization, adopted Firefighters Memorial Park. Also on the same day, Kingman Rotary Club adopted Wallach Ranch Park. And on September 25th, the Venture Club of Kingman adopted Cecil Davis. These are the three month certificates that'll be going out this month. This is the Kingman Route 66 Rotary Club and the Kingman Young Marines and Marine Corps League 887. All right, moving on to trails. Campsville Springs got a new kiosk. This was researched and designed in-house. Uh, our streets department actually helped with printing the, the uh, signs and we fabricated the frame. Also in-house, we built trash receptacles. It's the same as the new ones that are currently going in at Centennial Park. At Campbell Loop, the area around the kiosk was leveled and widened. We had a new trash receptacle, also the same ones that were built in-house. We put up non-motorized vehicle signs that kind of help with traffic going in behind there. And we also put up boulders to kind of deter traffic that aren't authorized to go back there. At our White Cliffs Wagon Wheels Trail, we had some diversion work that we did. Uh, our kiosk area, we brought up some dirt around it and the exterior of the rocks to limit water in the area. We had a channel that was made to divert water away from our picnic area that we just put in. Our smart we also put in a small channel in front of the ADA parking area to kind of divert water from that area as well. Uh, more direct entry was made to the upper trail bypass. Uh, Public Works was also kind enough to help us run a water line and install a meter. And the parks team installed a new drinking fountain complete with a dog bowl, ADA accessible fountain, and a water bottle filling station at that trailhead. We used red dirt around the fountain to match the kiosk area and the natural colors of the landscape. 
All right, now moving on to miscellaneous items. Uh, we hydroceded the area around Cecil Davis where the new playground was installed. We had our parks audio video van that we have uh, in-house that holds kind of all our equipment for our drive-in movies and that. We painted the side of that to be similar to that of a, a movie screen. We can actually set up and do smaller type movies and uh, displays on the side of the van complete with this generator. So it's kind of an all-in-one unit now. Um, instead of having to put up a screen, we can do smaller events on the side of it. Uh, all our temporary outfield fencing um, that we use on our ball fields was actually, a lot of it was damaged during COVID-19, closing down the playgrounds. We repaired all that, and we, it was actually used on all seven fields at Centennial in September for a weekend tournament. Um, almost every weekend that we've had, just like Yvonne mentioned, uh, the softball and baseball tournaments, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, you know, including putting up those fences. Uh, almost every weekend we've had overnight field preps that we've had to do, along with prepping fields on Friday and sometimes in the middle of the week for practices and other, other events. Uh, moving on to our maintenance repair orders, uh, we're seeing more and more of those come in. More people in-house are using those. We've kind of got a pretty, pretty good system set up and more and more people are finding it easy to use. Uh, so in August, we did 127 maintenance orders. September, 147 down to October with 162 with the, for the last three month period being 436 completed. Now moving on to our, our COVID-19 updates. Um, all this, all these hours that are represented here are hours that are taken away from other things, especially with uh, not having inmates and such. But since we've been dealing with COVID-19 from March to November 3rd, when this slide was made, we spent 6,631 hours just related to COVID items as far as putting up plexiglass, sanitizing every day. Uh, it, it all adds up pretty quick, but that's where we're at. Um, our total overtime hours just related to COVID is 388 alone. Um, we're still not receiving the inmate later, like previously mentioned. So that 6,600 hours, that was all, all staff time. No inmate labor at all. And at the time of this slide, we had two positions that were still unfilled, but we have a new employee that starts Monday. We finally got our uh, equipment operator position filled. Now moving on to the, the saddest part of this presentation. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the projects that we show in these, you know, and I always try to include pictures, it's sad to see them show up again, but in a damaged state. Uh, it's the most kind of disappointing part of our jobs on the parks team. Vandalism is still a very big issue in our department, totaling $4,800 since fiscal year. So since July, almost $5,000 has been done in vandalism. Uh, we had graffiti on the rock across from our new bridge at White Cliffs. We had the bridge itself. Actually, somebody started a fall, small fire on it and graffitied it. We had both restrooms behind Centennial, had handprints in the smeared parks using uh, handprints using hair dye. Uh, our paper towel dispensers were routinely getting vandalized after hours. So we actually stopped replacing them in bathrooms that have hand dryers because they were just getting ripped off almost daily. Uh, our portable toilets that we have on our dog parks, where we don't have water accessible. They've been destroying those. We've had uh, the doors torn off, the locks torn off. The blue light strands we put in at Locomotive to honor um, all the health care workers with uh, COVID, they were cut up and they destroyed the power line going to them. Uh, graffiti at Skate Park and the Firefighters Park, which, you know, that one's a memorial. The bridge and parking lot at White Cliffs had graffiti on it. The inner gate at Willow's Dog Park. Our brand new fence that we have at our newest dog park, they removed one of the inner gates and stole it. Uh, Wallach Ranch had graffiti all across the men's restroom, eggs in the women's restrooms. They ripped out our sprinkler heads. Uh, they threw trash all across the playground and the bridge of the playground. And Monsoon Park also had the interior, interior door handle ripped off it. <laughs> so it's, it's a constant thing we come in every day. And it's, uh, like I said, probably the worst part of this job is doing these great things and then eventually having to show a picture of them getting destroyed shortly after. But I believe that that sums up the end of my presentation if uh, anybody has any questions. I have a question. Uh, I guess it's how do you do it all? <laughs> it's really amazing what you do. I've been to the parks and and despite all the vandalism and the maintenance challenges they just look amazing so i want to thank you to jerry and your crew for that well i appreciate that i, I think the to sum up the answer to that is the team like uh when COVID hit and we had the inmates and mearsman's always told us you know to use the inmate labor the best you can and always be responsible with them but one day they're going to be gone 
And right now we're kind of experiencing this and I think it's gonna be kind of a learning tool for when one day if that program ends, we kind of know a little bit how to deal with it in a way. But uh, like I said, the team above me and below me, that's, we're all a good crew. We really work hard together. I would echo the same comments, Jerry. You and your team just do an outstanding job. I have a question for you. Has law enforcement ever been any way successful in nailing some of these people that are doing this damage? Um, with, with nailing it, I can't really answer that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would get the report on that because I think that would just kind of reside all within the police department. Um, one of the things that we have done and working with Yvonne's team is we actually have actually working with Yvonne's team and Patrick's team. Patrick's team supplied us with a, a golf cart and they keep it stored outside of our recreation building. And the, the police officers actually have a key to that and they take it around Centennial Park and try to do patrols as often as they can. Um, I know that they, they have kind of similar issues they're dealing with with being down manpower. Yeah. But it's one of the things that we have uh, done where they have an area they can park and kind of take off in a golf cart and patrol the park as, as time fits. But but Rick, uh, Yvonne's team helps with that and they keep the key in there and then they kind of coordinate it there, so. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Jerry? All right, hearing none, uh, move on to item 3E, Director of Parks and Recreation Department. Yes, I'd like to just touch real quickly on Jerry's. We have met with the police department and talked to them about uh, trying to do a little more of the patrolling and. Uh, work and they're, they're working with us. So we, we do realize it's a serious problem and uh, we're working hard to get it somewhat in line. So it is a very much a challenge though. Um, I'd like to just say uh, congratulations to Ann Dorr and Karen Fogg. They've both been reappointed to their first full three-year term on the commission. And they were approved by council for that. So I'm really happy about that. Good to have them and looking forward to working with them. And also another exciting, uh, at last night's council meeting, the council approved our uh, construction project on the pickleball courts with a, uh, General Acrylics, a company out of Phoenix that does a lot of tennis courts all around the Southwest basically. And they've done bullheads. They've done a lot of work at the schools on their tracks and things like that. So we're real happy to be working with them. And we had to find a company that would work with us because we're doing a lot of the prep ourselves. Jerry's team is, and so um, we have to do that to save on the budget because we don't have a big enough budget to just job the whole thing out and get it done. So that's kind of what we've done. And I would just like to touch on a little more about the COVID hours that Jerry talked about and Patrick talked about, and and even in our recreation department, they've done a, they've all done an amazing job during this to be able to change on the fly and do all the things they had to do and without inmates and uh, the amount of hours that they're spending sanitizing, even our office staff, somebody comes in, touches something when they sanitize it. So they're all working really, really hard at it. And it's been a uh, very much of a challenge. Um, now, I'd like to update you on the trails, basically the White Cliffs Wagon Wheels Trail Grant that was approved by Arizona State Parks. We got the approval to start that project. We're excited about that. This Friday, I have a meeting with representatives from American Conservation Experience. That's a company that's gonna be doing the work on that project. And we're gonna be doing a walkthrough on that and we're real happy with that. And also the, the project Jerry talked about, the drinking fountain, I just wanna to touch a little more on that. It turned out awesome. Jerry's team did a great job installing it and our water department did a real quick turnaround on getting the water to us in a quick time period. So that was, we really appreciate that as well. Um, something else we're working on is a, uh, concepts of utilizing utility easement trails to link areas of our city together. And a lot of those trails, you see them underneath the power lines already, and we've been utilizing those, but it's, it's a really a complicated, a long, a long, it's going to be a long time project because you have to get uh, approval from all the landowners that you deal with on that. And I've been in contact with uh, state lands with uh, BLM, the county, Unisource. And so we're, we're talking about that and working through that project. It'd just be a nice project to, like I said, have trails that could link our city together. Um, we're also looking at trying to get a trail to link White Cliffs Wagon Wheels to downtown. 
we think that would be great. All the work we're doing up there. And if we could link that to downtown so people could get to the bars and restaurants and go for a little hike and uh, do that easily, that would be great. I met with Ed Mann from CRADA, the Colorado River Trail Alliance, and went out there and looked at the projects. And uh, we're excited about the trails too, and we're working hard on those. Uh, coming soon, Jerry talked about the shade structure over um, Firefighters Park. We're going to be putting a shade structure over the playground at Southside Park and also a shade sail over the rest of the playground at Firefighters Park. So we're working on those and then Shade Net, the company, the contractor that's going to be doing the work came in to review the installation and so uh, we're excited to get that project done. Then our next playground shades that we'll be working on, it will be at uh, Wallach Ranch Park. We're excited to get that. That's a really nice playground, gets a lot of use and we're going to uh, look at putting shade structures over the playground and the swing set there. Um, there's something else I'm very proud of. Uh, the first department to get the city's Mission Vision Values Excellence Award was the Parks and Recreation Department. And we were um, recommended by the HR department for that. So we're excited about that. Uh, I think our department is kind of known as the go-to department. So when they need something done, they call us and we take care of it and get it done. So um, really proud of the work our team's done on that. Something else I'm really happy about is we uh, worked out uh, with the Kingman Unified School District and IGA for a six acre parcel that's north of um, the new Sunbelt Park and it's east of Whitecliffs Middle School. And uh, the school has six acres that we'll be utilizing to put in a stormwater retention area, a stormwater channel that will channel the water around the park site and uh, past the school. So it's a, it's a win-win for both. And it was approved by the Kingman Unified School District Board uh, Tuesday, October 5th, and then by our city council on the 20th. So I'm really happy about that. And a uh, uh, big thank you to our city attorney, Carl Cooper, helped me write the IGA. and. It was so good that the school's legal department didn't even have any uh, amendments to it. So we're happy about that. And uh, then the city engineer, um, I appreciate his help. He met with, uh, we did a Zoom meeting with uh, the engineering firm representing the school to talk about the project and uh, work through that with our engineering department, Greg Henry, like I said, myself and their engineers and work through that. And it's like I said, it's a win-win for both. I think it's gonna be a, great for the schools and for the park site. And if you've heard me say before, more water flows across that park site than flows into Monsoon Park, which when I heard that the first time, I was shocked by that because it sure seems like a lot of water flows into Monsoon Park. So um, we're excited to get that put, to put together and get it going. Uh, another project, uh, Route 66 Rotary, who's going to be doing a presentation for us in a couple of minutes here. Uh, they have another project that they're working on and we wanted to try to get it on this agenda, but we're gonna get it on the next agenda. They're looking at installing a handrail to the steps at Metcalf Park. And uh, so we'll probably get that on the next agenda. And like I said, we're looking forward to it. It's gonna, we think be a nice improvement and um, uh, be a nice improvement there for this Metcalf Park area. Um, and a, I also wanna say a huge thank you to the all of our team members for the, they talk about these ball tournaments during COVID like they're not much, but it's, it's huge. It's a huge amount of work that we didn't have budgeted for. And um, the recreation team has done a great job of uh, getting all these, working with the event organizers to make these events be as safe as they can be. Um, it's a huge economic impact. Yvonne touched on it. Our hotels and restaurants, basically this, this is what's keeping them afloat right now is the, people that come in town for a softball and baseball tournaments. So, you know, and it is a challenge because, you know, there are some people that think we shouldn't be allowing anything and there's other people that think we should be allowing everything. So it, it's a very much of a fine line that we're walking and it's a challenge that we're facing and uh, very proud of the job we're doing in Jerry's team, uh, removing fences, rebuilding mounds, prepping fields, Jerry touched on it, but all hours of the night, almost every weekend, he's got guys out there doing that. So. We've ruined a lot of our employees' weekends this summer, so, but uh, we appreciate the job they're doing on it, and uh, they've been doing a great job. And Yvonne's team, Yvonne uh, supervises the park rangers, and they've done a great job. 
of uh, enforcing our alcohol restrictions, dumping trash, enforcing the CDC guidelines, uh, just been overloaded with work basically. And um, like I said, it's not something that we were prepared for, but our, our team members have stepped up and done a great job. And the golf course staff, same there, they've done a great job with COVID, keeping it safe. And um, for the, especially when the Nevada courses were closed and California courses were closed and we were flooded, but even our locals are playing a lot more golf, which is great to see. I think it's a great sport that you can do safely and uh, get out there and play golf. So uh, we're excited about that. But like I said, it's been a total team effort from top to bottom in our department. So we're happy about that. Um, and then I would like to say thank you to all of you for your help on this commission. We really appreciate it. And our next meeting is scheduled for uh, February 17th. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mike? I think speaking for our commission, uh, you have a great team and you do great work. We're really proud of what you're doing for Kingman. Thank you very much. Hey, okay, moving on to item four, old business. Does anyone have any old business to discuss? Okay, hearing none, we're gonna move on to item five, new business. And the first item we have is Route 66 Rotary request to install a peace pole at Metcalf Park. Presented by Susan Williams. Susan. You need to unmute Susan. I pushed the space bar, but I guess it didn't work. Um, thank you. Um, Council Chair Roger Jacks and uh, Council Members. Um, talking about the parks, our Kingman Route 66 loves Medcalf Park. We are honored to have adopted it. And it's great to see all the other um, community um, service organizations and um, places, nonprofits adopting them too. Um, we take pride. Sadly, this year we couldn't do our Oktoberfest nor could we do the um, Art in the Park Festival, but um, we do go uh, every month and have a meeting there to clean it up and um, we enjoy it, so thank you. And so with that, um, I'm here today to um, present a little bit about what Rotary um, means in, in our mission. So our mission um, in Rotary is um, we provide service to others, promote integrity, and advance the world, understanding, goodwill, and peace through our fellowship of business, professional, and community leaders. So all the services that we pro provide locally and throughout the world, peace is a focus. Um, we create peace and um, and try for whatever we do um, to uh, make sure that's key. And so with that, um, I'm gonna do a presentation um, just to talk about the, a little bit about the Peace Poll and um, where we see it in um, this park. And we hope that um, we could bring a little peace to this park um, and a, a, pay, a space that people can come and um, feel that peace. Um, in the park also, we have the um, all-inclusive swing too that um, our Rotary Club um, wrote a grant for and purchased. So um, we are an all-inclusive uh, club. So with that, I am gonna try to share my screen. Okay, can you see that? No. No. Okay. No, so no. Let, let me come back to Zoom and try to. I believe you have to select what you're going to share. Where? Uh, oh, the file. Let me see. Hmm. Susan. 
If yes. you like, I've got the file ready to go when yes. you are. But where is it here that I could um, share? I, I just don't even see the... Uh... At the bottom of your screen. Okay, let's see. Okay, there it is. I um, didn't have it full screen, so there we go. Okay. Perfect. Um, Bill McClure couldn't be here tonight. They're actually um, having a fireside chat tonight with uh, um, several new members. So, um, but I'm here on his behalf too. So he's our president this year and um, loves to go to the park too, brings all his grandkids there to help us clean on our cleaning day. So a peace pole, this is what it looks like. Um, it's a monument that displays a message, peace, may peace prevail on earth. Um, the peace pole has four languages, um, one on each side, and it originated in Japan in 1955. And it came out of a man that was, um, that lived during the atomic bomb and fell on his city of Hiroshima. And he wanted to do something to create peace in the world. And so he started this um, back in 1955. And today there's hundreds of thousands of these poles placed in every corner of the world. Um, and like it's an official project of the World Peace, Peace Prayer Society that's headquartered um, in Wasik, New York. Um, it's a nonprofit, member supported, non sectarian organization with non governmental organization status at the UN. And its sole mission is to unite people across the world through the universal peace message may peace prevail on earth. And introduction of peaceful places, we see these peace poles in gardens, community parks, schools, and public spaces. We have one, our students at Lee Williams High School has one in their common area. So the Rotaract young Rotarians at that school installed a peace pole on June 7th, 2019. And there's our Rotary club. Um, and again, just like I said, they're um, in throughout Arizona, they're at schools, parks, library, public places, and the poles can be um, surrounded with flowers, they can have a, a cement slab or, you know, place a, par a park bench near it. Um, so somebody could sit um, and just enjoy it. Um, the peace pole is white aluminum. It's eight feet tall. Um, it's four inches by four inches and again, eight feet tall and the four sided with um, each side having a different language. Um, we were proposing English, German, French, and Wallapai. Um, planting of the pole, it's buried about 18 to 20 um, inches into the ground. Um, you can either just dig it and place it, but we would like to put a cement slab in the ground and place the pole in it. Or if the park um, department, <clears throat> excuse me, um, wants to have a square slab around it, we can do that too. <clears throat> I'm going to apologize. I'm getting over a cold. And it's not COVID. I've been tested. So. <clears throat> So I can go back out into the world. Um, and then flowers, we were um, thinking about making sure that when um, we clean the park that we um, have flowers there too. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is just an example of um, a peace pole here with flowers around it, um, different places that it is throughout the community. And then this would be um, the top right for me would be um, putting the cement in the ground and then securing the pole in the cement. <laughs> we got a um, bid from a local handyman kind of guy. Um, 
about $200 for materials. And we would, the Rotary Club would um, provide that in addition, the pole. So this is the location, um, <coughs> excuse me, the yellow star there. So if you enter the park on Grandview, come in where the rest areas are, it is to the left. And it's already like a barren area right now that needs something put in there. And this peace ball, I think would look pretty good there. <laughs> so there it is at another angle. <coughs> That's a top view. So this is it. Um, you walk up the steps and right in that area there. That's from that angle. And I just put a pole in there so you could see. Um, we'd like to put flowers around it. <laughs> but that's where it would be. And that would be with flowers. Close fed, you know, close to that. So if there is peace in the world, there must be peace in the nations. If there is to be peace in the nations, there must be peace in the cities. If there is to be peace in the cities, there must be peace between neighbors. If there is to be peace between neighbors, there must be peace in the home. If there is to be peace in the home, there must be peace in the heart. And that's Lao Tzu. So with that, that is a quick look at what this Peace Bowl could look like. Any questions for Susan? Comments? Yeah, I have. I have one. Um, like I said, and I, I don't want to sound negative, but a big mm -hmm. part of what I see every day is vandalism. I, I saw on there on his quote where he just showed two hundred dollars and he was going to install it. Um, now, with him installing it, is there any uh, you know with an eight foot pole you can get a lot of leverage on an eight foot pole? I didn't see how much concrete or anything else that was going into that. Say it were to get ripped out, uh, is he going to offer any type of warranty or reinstallation or something like that due to vandalism? I talk to that. Mm -hmm. uh, the eight foot pole is actually only six foot above the ground. It's oh, buried really. between 20 and 18 inches to 24 inches in the ground. And that would be all cement. And that would take quite a bit of effort to dig that out of the ground. Well, I mean, still even with six foot, it, it doesn't, you already got leverage kind of working with you. You know, I was just kind of curious how big of a hole it was going to be with it. Because if it's like a fence post, six foot, it'd still be kind of easy to kind of get out. No, we're going to, we're going to actually do, it's going to be about a 12 inch square uh, around the pole. It's actually going to be, it's, it's, it will be circular because they'll use an auger to drill it. Okay. Um, also, too, along with vandalism, like I said, I, I hate to sound negative, but it's a, it's a part of our daily lives at parks. Uh, say the pool does get vandalized or somebody cuts it down, would that be a park's responsibility to replace? Okay, let me ask this. I would say the club, but do you have insurance for vandalism? Not for something like that, we don't. Okay, all right. And usually, if they're going to put something in a park, they have to supply uh, money for, to replace it if that happens. But yeah, um, we think, you know, I'm confident that with your organization adopting the park, that yeah. if something does happen. And right. I, I agree with Jerry. I, I'm concerned about vandalism all the time, too, mm -hmm. but I sure hope somebody wouldn't vandalize this. I mean, it would right. be you just, it surprises you what they do vandalize, though, I'll tell you that. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, I, I, I'm comfortable with the amount of the cost of that, that your group would uh, mm -hmm. replace it if need be. And right. so I don't think we need to have, I don't think we need for you to give us the money up front to replace it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once again, I'm sorry to sound negative. It's just a, it's an everyday thing I deal with. I apologize. Well, it's understandable. I'll hide a game camera up there somewhere on the building so we can watch it. <laughs> I was going to say, what about some cameras? 
for all we've your talked about they're expensive for one thing but we've talked about mm -hmm. it and uh, we've talked more with our city attorney about that kind of stuff because there are some liability issues with putting mm -hmm. them up as well and so we, we've talked about it but they are expensive too to do that but mm -hmm. when you look at the cost of the vandalism that we're having uh, the cost would uh, probably more than pay for itself so susan uh are there any plans to uh, expand into other parks with the peace pole or is this just something that you're looking um, at for Metcalf? Just Metcalf right now, but um, we love to spread peace. So <laughs> we'd be game for buying a few more peace poles. <laughs> okay. Well, Roger, I'm sure your uh, rotary yeah. is in that, right? <laughs> yeah, I'd have to check. I can't speak for the group, but it's a possibility. Yeah. Any other questions or comments uh, for Susan? Okay, looking for a motion for a recommendation to city council to install a peace pole at Metcalf Park. I'd like to make that motion. Okay, a motion by Commissioner Fogg. Looking for a I second. That installed in the Metcalf Peace Pole. I'm sorry, say again. Uh, I would second. Is that Commissioner Angleson? Yes, it was. Okay, so we have uh, a motion by Commissioner Fogg and a second by Commissioner Angleson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Roger, did we lose you? <laughs> I think we just lost Roger. Since uh, Roger's connectivity, um, he's no longer at the meeting right now. Um, the meeting would then go to Otis to chair for the remaining of the meeting. Hello. Okay, so our motion passed. So far, uh, we've received all okay. approval. You can try it again if you want, and then she's letting Otis take over right now. So, but try to log back on if you want. And... All right. Okay. I'll tell her that you're looking to get on. Thank you. Okay. Bye. It says the meeting host is waiting to let Roger back in. Okay. And Otis could just ask if anybody has any no votes, which I didn't, I think everybody said yes. So, do we have any no votes? Uh, I abstained uh, due to conflict of interest since I'm. President-elect of that. <laughs> Noted, Bill. Sorry. All right, with no no votes, it passes. Thank you. We look forward to Thank it. Thank you. We'll, we'll get with, now does it go to city council from here? Yes. Okay. I'll let you know when we get on the agenda and reach out to you and let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you very much. your time. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. Do we have any other new business? No, I don't. There's no more on the agenda. Okay, then. Well, I guess that just let me look at the agenda. Do you have, um, if there's any announcements by any commission members? 
Yes, that would be next. Any announcements by any commission members? I'll say something, which is have everyone have a wonderful Thanksgiving and be safe and have a wonderful holiday. You as well, and everybody as well. Now, there's something I'd like to add too. Um, you guys saw how many man hours that we spend on COVID and down our inmates and other things. I want to kind of say how important it is they adopt a park programs themselves, how much that has helped with kind of the, the extra areas that we might not be able to get to as far as our rotation and try to complete it without inmates. But it, it, it's a huge help. And uh, parks has more areas than just parks. We also have medians, roadside landscapes, a uh, whole bunch of little neighborhood niche areas that aren't really technically a park, but it still falls under our responsibility. But the adopt a park program is, has been awesome and helped out a lot. And not just parks, but there's also, you know, kind of other little areas that are up for adoption as well that, that we could uh, kind of set up for that. But uh, I think it's awesome, um, the community coming together and helping out with stuff like that. It's been a huge help. Thank you all and be safe. All right. If there's no other comments, do I have a motion we adjourn? I'll make that motion. All right. Second. I'll make that motion. We uh, adjourn the meeting. No second. Okay. okay. So motion made by Bill and Karen seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, all right. Meeting adjourned. Everyone have a great Thanksgiving and see you in February. You too as well. Bye-bye. Yeah.